Hey Bruno, I was just in the area and thought I'd stop by and see what you're up to. Well, today, Daryl, we decided we're going to test some Poisson's Ratio on a composite coupon using a P3 from micro, me uh, micro measurement to collect our strain data and we'll use okay. an Instron to load the specimen. Okay. Basically, in this case, what we're trying to do is determine Poisson's Ratio, as we all know, is a transverse uh, strain over the axial strain. And it looks like a, you've got a two element T rosette to do that? Yeah, correct. We use a 125 LT in this case, which is already pre-wired as a CTOA gauge provided by micro measurement. The pre-wiring help us to reduce our labor time where we don't have to actually solder connection and cables uh, to the actual gauge. Uh, the first channel on this um, gauge, which is actually on the left side, is your transverse uh, direction and your axial direction is on the number two here. And if you look at the wiring on the actual P3, we actually did the exact same thing. We used channel one for transverse and channel two for axial. Okay, and it looks like the gauge factor for grid one, the, the transverse is 2.12, and then for the axial uh, grid is 2.14. So I'm guessing you can put that into the P3, correct? Correct. In the P3, basically, we have to define channels, bridges, type, and also the, the scaling, and then we can just start the recording. As far as we're concerned, we're using two channels, one and two. The P3 has capabilities to go to four. The bridge, actual uh, bridge, we're using, as you can see here, a quarter bridge uh, for one and two. The other three and four are not being used. And if we look at scaling, this is where we would enter the actual information. Okay, so let's do that. So grid number one, channel one, is 2.12. So we basically. Yep, you got that. So we we as you can tell now, the machine will actually take that into account every time we take a measurement. No, originally a lot of equipment out in in the um, industry only assume that you're using a gauge factor of two. Okay. Um, this actual instrument allows you to do that to change a, the actual scaling, which in this case is very important. Now, if we go to channel two. Now again, we're gonna put the new value. Yeah, it's 2.14. Now that the value is in, we're basically, the only thing we have to do is load the specimen, zero our strain before we start, because as we load the specimen, we're gonna induce some strain, which could be, in this case, we might wanna measure that to see if we load the specimen properly, but in most cases, we wanna zero it, assuming we have loaded the specimen properly and start the test. Okay. So we already know what this material normally would do. Um, we've tested this material many times. The Poisson's ratio is in the neighborhood of 0 0.14, 0 0.15. Uh, we have variations sometimes to, from 0 0.12 to 0 0.15. Um, the good news with and this- I'm, I'm guessing a lot of that has to do with the layup of the fibers. And th the this is correct. This is a material that's actually a 0 090 orientation fabric. Um, that's actually an epoxy glass. And, um, and if you look closely, this is a similar type of materials you would see in, in a printed circuit board. Mm -hmm. And also would be used, in our case here in the lab, we use it sometimes for um, standard testing for tabbing type material. Okay, cool. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna load the specimen. And when we load, we gotta be careful that we're aligned properly. This is a very critical aspect of this test because we're trying really to measure the zero and 90 orientation. And to do that, we're gonna make sure the specimen is pretty much at that orientation. Okay. Basically that we have a true axial and the strain gauge is bounded properly so the 90 degree orientation is correct. Gotcha. When this is done, basically the only thing we have to do at this point is to zero the P3 box, uh, the offsets created from the installation and also the natural offset of the gauge being installed. Okay. And to do that, we only have to, uh, very simply, we push the balance button and the instrument asks us if we really want to balance or not. We just go ahead and balance it. We can actually record this as we were the data before we start the data. And if you look at the actual display now, we are dealing with one or two micro strain, um, basically after balance, which you know, if I move the specimen here, you will see right away a lot of movement. Yeah, 
They're very sensitive to that, very sensitive. Uh, these are 350 ohm gauges. So the sensitivity of that gauge is really good for this test. Uh, and if you can tell as the specimen, you know, stop, you're going to return really close to these original values. And it's really important when you run this test that you actually have decent zero value and good zero return where you don't want to have a permanent offset. That means either your loading is not correct or there's uh, other issues that's, mm -hmm. you know, in the, your setup per se, or even the installation of the gauge. And composites are known to be somewhat time dependent, right? So when you're, when you're setting it up and you put, put a little bit of a, a load on it, there's some time dependent properties why you'd see well there. there's there could be some a little bit of a creep, a little bit um, of creep right. there's a little bit of creep in the data and uh we've seen that over over time and really it's it's really product dependent um some okay. product in this case we're using an epoxy which is a very rigid matrix and epoxy has a very stable behavior this way okay so now just re-zero it again we got two two thousand micro basically we got two micro strain which in reality as we all know, you know, we always use a saying, one micro strain is one inch over 16 miles distance. Two micro strain in this case is, is, is very little. Yeah. So it's we're, we're satisfied with this value. And now okay. we just, the only thing we have to do is start the test. To do so, basically I'm gonna balance the load here. This is a previous test that we've run here recently. We're only going to be looking at, we're not looking at the strain value here, we're only going to be looking at the load values moving forward. Um, we're just going to restart this test here. Basically, the only thing we have to do is, you know, like I said, we only have to worry about, we already have the dimension of that product, which is correct in the computer. And now we're just going to start the test. The test will be running roughly at 0.05 inches per minute. Yes. And if you look at the displacement, remember that number one is transverse and number two is axial. Basically, what we see here is we got a transverse that's actually negative, which means the specimen is compressing in this direction while we're actually trying to stretch it. If you want to amplify this phenomenon, you can use an actual rubber band and actually stretch it, and you will see that the actual transverse direction is trying to collapse in compression. So this is basically what we're seeing here. You're not visually seeing it on a coupon that's so rigid. But you can actually, the, the um, strain gauges are so precise, you will actually be able to see that situation. And right now, if you look at the actual test, we're roughly, let's say, 3,000 micro strain for 468. So if you would divide the two, 468 over 3,000, you're probably going to be in that neighborhood of 0 0.14, 0 0.15. 0 0.156. Um, the reason why we're probably high is normally we try to get the Poisson's ratio in the lower portion of that curve. As we pull on this material over time, we'll have a little bit of viscoelastic behavior towards the top end of that elastic portion. Let's try. Can we stop the load now and try to get a... We sure can. All right, so let's hold it right there. So we've got 675, 47, 32. 675 divided by 4732. Yeah, so that's uh, 0.1426. This, so is that, this is what we were expecting for this product. And if you look at the display, you'll see that the slowly but surely, the strain is starting to go down. And reason being for this is, this is a typical relaxation that you would see in a composite material. You have a polymer matrix, as rigid as it might be, will still have some relaxation. Right. So although so we're trying to hold the load and we're doing it, the material is actually just having a little bit of relaxation into it. Right. So we can see the load being constant on the screen at 11, 49, 48 pounds, and we're getting a little bit of relaxation. Right now you can see very slowly the product will relax to a certain point where it's a very steady state mode where the specimen should be able to hold it at that point. So basically in a nutshell, this is how you do testing using a P3 with 
um, you know, to do Poisson's ratio. And isn't there an ASTM standard that you could refer to if you wanted to read more about this type of testing? This is basically what we ran today is what we call an ASTM D3039, which is made for composite, you know, material. And it basically, it is the most recognized standard for Poisson's ratio for composite material. Normally for this type of test, we use in this case a 125 type uh, size gauge, you can go up to 250. The minimum requirement for the standard is 125 size. So 125 would be an eighth of an inch active Correct. gauge length. Right? Uh, normally for specimen, with this specimen here we have a really tight knit fabric, which it's perfect to use 125. If you have a, a bigger fabric or bigger type fiberglass setup, you would use a 250 so you have a better orientation and distribution on the width of the specimen so that you have, you know, accurate data. Okay. All right, great. Well, Bruno, thanks for uh, taking the time and spending a few minutes with us and showing it to us. You're welcome. Have a good day. Thank you.